we've been saying for quite some time that we're at this uh, so-called inflection point in terms of cap rate cycle. And we're moving now more to the quality of the income that uh, sits within those assets. And that's certainly been you know, the focus of us around the um, superior investment performance. But at the same time, uh, there is absolutely no doubt there's been a change in the residential cycle and we have been experiencing a down cycle. We said two years ago that we were positioning ourselves for the market to move back to a um, more normalised market. I think we've got it went too early, but certainly we are experiencing a lot more of that challenge. But what I would highlight to you is a disciplined approach we take to capital. So over the sort of last uh, three, four, five years, We've had a very strict uh, discipline around how we think about the use of our balance. And now we sit there with around about 15% of our capital is allocated to the active side, which is where the residential business resides. The 85% is where we look at the assets we own, the quality of our assets, and the, and the quality of the income that's coming from that. And that is progressively built, and I'll show you in a moment how in particularly the O&I side, we've been the office and industrial side, how active we've been. But the, un the underlying point is, as we go forward, Mervac has, through this discipline approach, built a portfolio of quality assets, predominantly in office, so a very young portfolio that is generating strong income, cash, to the business, and you'll see will be the core of what will underpin our distribution going forward. Um, our focus is on uh, creation, you know, an urban asset creation. And um, we've certainly been on a journey for uh, six years since Sue Lloyd Hurwitz took taken um, over as CEO to be f very focused on core disciplines. And what we have undertaken is really divesting of a lot of assets that weren't on strategy. And I'll give you a good example is retail. So retail, we identified we wanted to be effectively in major cities where there was uh, densely populated areas of particularly Sydney. And so we were active for quite some time in divesting of those country shopping centres, smaller regional type centres. And I think if you pick up the and follow the press at the moment, you'd see that that was a good strategy and we were able to sell well above book value in most of those assets. We've cleansed our portfolio and now our retail is very much urban focused. The same for uh, residential. In a, um, 2011 to 2015, we were active in buying. We took advantage of markets in terms of being able to secure good assets in that market. And that allowed us to get to where we are today with 27,000 lots at our availability that we can develop over time. And the reason that's important, particularly over the last two years, we haven't been that active in the residential. We've been concentrating on executing on the portfolio we've had. So. We are starting to move to see new opportunities for acquisitions, but certainly the last couple of years we've just been taking advantage of the good buying we did from 2011 and 2015. But you know, there is no doubt, as I said to you before, that the active income from the residential business is becoming more variable. But I highlight the point that I said to you earlier. 85% of our balance sheet is invested in, in what I would describe as assets we own, passive assets and with strong cash flow generation coming through as we finish development of those assets. And that's what's going to underpin the distribution growth that we've been um, sort of uh, the journey we've taken thus far and expect to uh, take um, over the foreseeable future. For the residential, um, and what we're still seeing is good sales in our master plan community. So we have seen a slowdown in the level of activity. In December, 2016, our pre-sales on apartments were at a record high, and I think it was around 3 billion of pre-sales, 3.1 to be precise, and gradually that's come down. We're about 2 billion now. But it was a really taking advantage of that market, but I say that to demonstrate we took advantage of that very buoyant, favourable market conditions, but as I said to you earlier, we recognise the changing in the market and scale that down. If you look at this current financial year, we forecast that we would settle 2,500 lots this financial year. And uh, the update that we just did talked about we were up to 1,290. You're probably thinking, gee whiz, how are you going to get to 2,500? I assure you that compared to the level of activity that we undertook in um, the last three years, which was much higher settlement, particularly in the last quarter, 
we will certainly achieve the 2,500 settlement. So for us, we've got great light of sight over our, um, what our residential business will contribute, certainly over the foreseeable future. The one uh, key point that people ask us is about default rate. And that default rate is still below 2%. Okay, so I would say to you that the experience of Mervac being in the residential business for 45 years has allowed us to understand the best way to manage through multiple cycles, and that's what's given us a key edge in terms of managing through <coughs> that uh, default rate, um, keeping it under 2%. As at the end of March, we had secured on a, for the residential EBIT 87% of our EBIT. So we're pretty comfortable in terms of our guidance, which I'll talk about in a moment. Um, the continual focus uh, will be in Sydney and Melbourne. We've, we've been consistent in terms of those deep markets, whether it's in residential or office um, uh, in particular, and then more in Sydney for industrial and retail, they will be the markets we'll concentrate on. When you look at the, um, the future um, for residential, um, I was going to say to you that on pricing, when we talk about decline, the average prices are um, down by 9% uh, on, in the areas that we focus on. But Mervac, um, uh, sorry, 9% for housing, 6% for apartments. But Mervac is certainly being well below that because of the quality of the, the markets that we're concentrated on. But I do um, underline the point around um, uh, you know, challenging markets in residential, but we're still seeing good opportunities in the, in the sort of specific markets that we're concentrated on for both um, MPC and apartment. Long-term ur urbanisation, as I said to you, Sydney and Melbourne, and 74% uh, of our um, investments are in Sydney and Melbourne. The one key part is uh, this, this graph highlights is the population growth of both of those cities. So above 110,000 per annum. And as you can see, uh, I won't go into glorious detail now, but when you do the analysis, this um, supply gap will emerge again. So over time, you'll see the markets that we're concentrating on greater demand coming for product in those markets. Just quickly on office, um, and I'll come to this killer slide in a moment, but just a headline in terms of office, Sydney and Melbourne again, lowest vacancy rates in three decades, um, now below 4% in the CBD for both Sydney and Melbourne. So very, very fu strong fundamentals, and that's what Mervac has really taken advantage of. Uh, occupancy in our office portfolio remains high at 97.9%, but very strong. And we have a weighted average lease expiry um, uh, at 6.5 years, so very strong sort of tenure of uh, tenants in um, our building. Um, the industrial side, occupancy uh, for industrial is at 99.7. So it's a great business for effectively set and forget. You know, um, we've secured almost 100% of the um, uh, leasing space and providing a very strong, healthy yield. I will touch on, on industrial just to say in terms of our future for industrial is out of Badgerys Creek. So we recently acquired um, uh, some land out at uh, 240 hectares of land out near uh, out of Badgerys Creek, near the, where the airport has been built. And you'll start to see in the sort of short to medium term, us starting to progress the uh, development opportunities out there. So, you know, it's a demonstration of us creating value. Where we've acquired a site on a very capital efficient basis. And over time, we'll start to develop that and that'll be the future of um, value that's contributed. But this slide is really just typical of the level of activity that Mervac has um, undertaken over the last few years. And you'll see, um, you know, over the next three to four years, a few things are going to happen. We'll complete a number of sizable developments um, in Sydney and Melbourne. And out of that, we'll generate an additional circa $95 million of net operating income. So that's cash that's coming from um, our, our new uh, developments. And at this stage, we're about 90% 90, 90 of that development pipeline is committed. So these are to major tenants like um, CBA, Deloitte, those types of uh, quality tenants. So it sets us up for the future and equally on the development side. The last, when we, at the, just August last year, we said our uh, development contribution was about a billion dollars for the last three years. And predominantly all of that was coming from residential. The next three years, you'll get a mix 
of residential, but you're starting to see this sizable contribution from the office and the industrial as well. So the, the mix is changing, but it just tip, uh, demonstrates the capability of Mervac to tap into that additional market to help us along. On retail, um, look, I won't uh, go into too much detail there other than to say, as I said to you earlier, this very concentrated focus on um, densely populated urban areas of Sydney and about, um, particularly of Sydney, 72% of our portfolio is in the Sydney market, right? And the balance in predominantly uh, Brisbane and um, small component in um, Melbourne. But on any measure, we continue to be at the upper end in terms of performance matrix versus the um, other um, um, retail REITs. And that just typifies the location of our um, assets and typifies this sort of very concentrated effort, effort particularly around Sydney. Okay, um, I might just skip across to um, the future opportunities. And, um, but, uh, yep, so really in terms of future opportunities, um, the one thing I'd highlight is our balance sheet. We've undertaken this discipline approach, and I said to you earlier about the amount of um, capital on our balance sheet that's exposed to residential less than 15%. We've concentrated on building this quality portfolio of office assets in particular. It's about just above 60% of that um, uh, capital invested is in office. About 10% is in industrial and the balance is in retail. But that's what's underpinning the quality of our future cash flows and as I said, our distributions. But you, from a balance sheet point of view, relatively uh, conservative gearing, we have both Moody's and Fitch with A ratings, which um, I'd have to say as a CFO, we, we take very seriously in working towards maintaining that sort of uh, rating. Uh, at weighted average debt maturity, what, 6.1 years? We've just done some more recent debt um, financing, which will probably strengthen that sort of profile. And uh, cost of debt is around 4.5%. And then finally, guidance, which we reaffirmed um, last week. Um, uh, guidance of 16.9 to 17.1 cents per security, which equates to about 3 to 4% um, earnings growth. But importantly, our growth in distributions, we've uh, confirmed um, the 5% growth in distributions, which will be funded out of cash. And if I could emphasize a point last year, our payout ratio based on adjusted funds from operations was 77%. So we'll continue that sort of conservative payout rate going forward. 